Hey, welcome back everybody. This is The World According to Briggs, and I'm Briggs. On this channel, we do lists about locations, towns, cities, states, and the US. And soon, we're going to be branching out to other countries. I've been getting a lot of requests about Canada. So last week, while doing research on a few of my lists, I came across some very secluded towns in the United States. Some towns in this country are four to five hours away from any other town or city. We have some in Alaska that are even further. All the towns on this list started in these locations for a reason. So we're going to get into it and find out where they are and why they are. So here's my top 10 most secluded towns in America. Number 10. Red River, New Mexico. The town of Red River sprung up in the 1870s when miners were drawn in by gold strikes in the area. It was named after a red tinted stream that flows through the center of town. Red River is one of my favorite town names in the whole country. Don't know why. By 1895, Red River was a booming mining camp with gold, silver, and copper in abundance. And the population is estimated to have grown to about 3,000 people. Mining hit its peak in the late 1800s. And by 1905, the mining for the most part had dried up. And most of the people left. The town turned into a tourist location and a great spot for trout fishing. And later on, skiing. The last mining extended till about 1931. By that time, tourism had become the real economic force, and the town survived. This place is a secluded mountain town, and the closest city being Santa Fe, about two to two and a half hours away. There's nothing in between Santa Fe and Red River. And before the comments come flying in, I know they have some small roadside towns along the route. They're just glorified rest stops. Quit typing. Number nine. Caribou, Maine. The first settlers came to what is now Caribou in the 1820s. Between 1838 and 1840, a war flared up between the United States and Canada, and the Battle of Caribou occurred in December of 1838. The dispute was over the proper use of the word A. Just kidding. It was about an international boundary. Now, it delayed a settlement of the area till after a treaty was signed in 1842. Now, what makes Caribou so secluded? Well, for starters, it's one of the most northeastern cities in the United States. It's a three-hour drive from Bangor, Maine. Bangor, Maine isn't even that big, but it's three hours away from that. Now, it does have a few really small towns along the way, but for the most part, you're looking at forest out your side windows on your three-hour drive. And if it's winter, the trip's going to be even longer. Maine is kind of sparse when it comes to people and towns, so it isn't hard to have a secluded town or two. They have a lot of woods out there. They even had a dude living in the woods outside of Rome, Maine, for 30 years. For 30 years, this guy avoided people. Now, there were the occasional sightings and rumors of him that there was a hermit at what they called North Pond or Long North Pond. Yeah, that was it. Now, recently, he was arrested for breaking into cabins. And when they interviewed him, he said he hadn't had a conversation with another human being in 27 years. 27 years. Another human being. And he said human being. In that 27 years, was he communicating with forest creatures? What was going on with that dude? Number 8. Crested Butte, Colorado. The East River Valley where Crested Butte is located was once used as a summer residence for the Ute people. The bad news is they were quickly displaced when European Americans first entered the area. And I'm sure at some point the Ute people thought, great, white people, there goes the neighborhood. The first white people to explore the valley were beaver trappers. And we all know when people start trapping your beaver, it's time to find a new home. Nothing worse than someone poaching your beaver. Crested Butte is a ski resort town that spans only about a half a mile, maybe a little more. It has about 1,400 permanent residents and is 21 miles away from the nearest small town. And Denver, and that's about a four and a half hour drive. What also makes this place so secluded is that all but one of the roads to Crested Butte get closed during the winter. And it's real easy to get snowed in here. And being snowed in sucks, especially if you don't have any beaver. Moving on. Number seven. Point Roberts, Washington. Point Roberts was created when the United Kingdom and the United States settled Pacific Northwest American Canadian border dispute in the mid-19th century with the Oregon Treaty. Both parties agreed that the 49th parallel would, you know, basically cut the country off. You know, Canada above the 49th parallel, United States below. The downside is, Point Roberts is kind of in a weird place. It's below the 49th parallel, but separate from the United States that way. So you have to actually go up through Canada. Now, over the years, there's been questions about seeding from the United States and becoming part of the Canadian territory. Nothing's really happened with that. 
I, now I've talked about this place in past videos, and it's one of the places I'd love to retire to. Now, what makes Point Roberts so secluded is you have to cross into Canada, then back in the United States, for your two-hour trip to Seattle, which is the closest major city. So you have to leave the little nipple of land that is Point Roberts, go into Canada, well, kind of get close to Vancouver, and come back down through Blaine, Washington, and on to Seattle. It's just kind of weird that you have to cross into another country to get here. So that's what makes Point Roberts so secluded. Number six, Tucumcari, New Mexico. Tucumcari is the actual inspiration for this list. I was doing a list and saw Tucumcari and how far out of the way it was, it just made me think of secluded towns. Tucumcari is truly in the middle of nowhere. Now, I talked about this one before, like I said, and the one thing I didn't talk about was how it's part of the historic Route 66. If you don't know anything about Route 66, it's one of the original highways in the U.S. highway system and was kind of the only way to get to the West Coast back in the 30s and 40s. What's neat about Tucumcari is they really haven't moved that town past the 30s and 40s like the rest of the country. It's kind of stuck in a time warp. You go there and it's just old buildings and extra wide roads like you'd see in old 50s movies. It's weird. Now, it's secluded. The nearest cities are Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's about two and a half hours to the west and Amarillo, Texas, which is about two hours to the east. And in between there, you have what appears to be filming locations for Mad Max films. Tucumcari is just desert. Number five, Nome, Alaska. There's no reason to live in Nome, Alaska unless you're avoiding a subpoena or you've always wanted to live in an igloo. Now that's a quote from the Nome City Hall website. Just kidding. I don't think they have internet, much less a website in Nome, Alaska. The largest city in Alaska is Anchorage. I can't give you the drive time from Nome to Anchorage because they don't have any roads that go from Nome to Anchorage. They only have one road out of Nome, and that's to a place called Teller, Alaska. Why anyone would want to go to Teller is beyond me. There's only about 15 buildings in the whole town. And when I say town, I'm being generous. It's more like a camp. But if you are in Nome and you ever contemplate driving to Teller, know that the roads are only open about four months a year. They close it down for winter, which, if you know anything about Alaska, seems to be most of the year. But if you do need to get to Anchorage, it is about an hour and a half flight from Nome to Anchorage, Alaska. Number four, Ely, Nevada. Ely is the largest city in White Pine County, Nevada. Ely was founded as a stagecoach stop along the Pony Express and Central Overland Route. In 1906, copper was discovered and Ely had a small mining boom after that. As of 2010, the population was about 4,000 people. And that's not counting the Supermax prison just outside of Ely. Now here's a fun fact. This little town has a famous past resident. First Lady Pat Nixon, as in President Tricky Dick Nixon's wife, she was born there in 1912. Now, Ely has some other little towns around it, but for the most part, it's far and away from any real cities. Las Vegas is about three and a half hours to the southwest, and Salt Lake City being three and a half hours to the east. I drove through Ely once. My impression of the place for my brief time there was that Ely has a whole bunch of senior citizens. And I'm not talking just there was a lot of them. There was a whole bunch, as in 90%, it seemed like. In my brief time there, now, I didn't spend a whole bunch of time, maybe a couple hours. Every single person I saw downtown Ely, including a little park there, was a senior citizen. I saw one person under the age of 40, and I think he was a cop. So, if you like bingo, you hate traffic, and you like to be near prisoners, you might want to move to Ely. Number three. Nia Bay, Washington. Nia Bay is the Macaw Reservation in Washington. The population was about 865 back in 2010. Now, it's across from the Canada-U.S. border in British Columbia. This is the most northwestern town on mainland United States. It's, it's the far northwest you can go. And before you comment, Alaska is not on the mainland. Quit typing. The local economy is sustained mostly by fishing and tourism, and during the summer, Nia Bay is a popular fishing area for sports fishermen. The big draw to this place is nature. This place has some of the best hikes in the whole Pacific Northwest. This place is really out there. The closest town is almost two hours away, and that would be Port Angeles, and that's on a really sketchy coastal highway. Seattle is almost five hours away, still along that pretty sketchy coastal highway, and then you gotta take a ferry and go through the woods and some other things. Wear a seat belt. You're probably going to hit a deer eventually. Number two, 
Angle Inlet, Minnesota. Angle Inlet is in Lake of the Woods County, Minnesota. Population is only about 60 people, and that's back in the 2010 census. This community is part of the Northwest Angle, the only place in mainland United States north of the 49th parallel. This place is hard to get to. The first closest small town is War Road. Minnesota, and that's about an hour and a half away. This is another one of those places you have to leave the United States, enter Canada, leave Canada, and enter the United States to get any place. Even in the that part of Canada, there's really nothing around it. Now, War Road is just a glorified truck stop like a lot of the places I talk about. The closest small city, I guess, would be Grand Forks, North Dakota, and that's almost four hours away from War Road. So we're talking five and a half hours, six hours to get any place. Now, I don't know why anyone would really want to live here at Angles Inlet, unless you like maybe like taunting Canadians or something like that. You can always stand on your dock and yell at passing Canadian boats, hey, hey you frickin' Canuck, here I am, I'm above the 49th parallel, suck it. You know, I mean, if that's your thing, why not? Number 1. Barrow, Alaska Barrow is the largest U.S. city north of the Arctic Circle. Nearby Point Barrow is the country's northernmost point. The location has been home of the Inuit people for more than 1,500 years. This place has no roads in or out of Barrow. Boat, fly, dog sled, those are your only options. This is a place where the snow never melts, the ground is always frozen, and the snow falls midsummer. These are the only people in the world that are hoping global warming is true and would happen faster than it already is. This place is so far north, the sun doesn't come up for almost three months during the winter. Imagine having a one night stand in the winter, three months of awkward morning conversations. Now there's an old joke about Barrow, Alaska. This guy walks into a bar, talks to a girl, she tells him to kiss her where the sun doesn't shine, so he buys two tickets to Barrow, Alaska. Barrow, Alaska is a five and a half hour flight from Anchorage, Alaska, the biggest town in Alaska. And it's about a two to three month sled ride if you don't like airplanes. Those are your only options in Barrow, Alaska. Barrow, Alaska is the second furthest north town in the world. There's one in uh, Siberia, Russia, that's a little bit further, but that's about it. Barrow, Alaska is the most secluded place in the United States. Well, that's it, that's my list. That's the most secluded and hardest to get to places in the United States. If you know of any places that I may have missed, leave them in the comments, let me know about it. Maybe we'll make another list. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to leave a comment. If this is your first time here, or third time, or fifth time here, and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I appreciate everyone watching my videos and subscribing. Be nice to each other, everyone.